Taiwan's incumbent president swept to a landslide victory in the country's election this weekend. Tsai Ing-wen won with a record-breaking number of votes. According to the country's election commission, 8 million ballots were cast in her favor. That's the most ever since the island began holding direct presidential elections in 1996. Tsai defeated a pro-Beijing rival. She firmly rejects China's one country, two systems model. The victory is considered a blunt rejection of Beijing's policies for the self-ruled island of 23 million people. CBSN contributor Isaac Stonefish joins me now. He's a senior fellow at the Asia Society Center on U.S.-China relations. Isaac, thanks very much for being here. What does Tsai Ing-wen's victory actually mean for both Taiwan but also China? means that the people of Taiwan have spoken and that the policies that Tsai advocates for and more distance from the mainland is something that the Taiwanese actually want. For Beijing, I think this is very frustrating because it's a real clear sign that the people of Taiwan don't elect the kind of government that the party has. How much of a role is what hap what's happening in Hong Kong, you think, how much of a role did that actually play in what we saw in Taiwan? That was a campaign ad for Tsai that money can't buy. Taiwanese voters watching what was happening in Hong Kong and watching the dissatisfaction and the chaos that comes in large part from people in Hong Kong not wanting what is called one country, two systems, this sort of semi-autonomy from Beijing. That message to Taiwanese voters is, well, what Tsai is offering in this distance from Beijing is, is much better for me and for my family and for my children. So what do people in Taiwan actually expect from the president now in her second term? What would her actual focus be? Like anywhere in the world, all politics is local. And so there would be a lot of bread and butter issues surrounding employment and economy, some basic political stuff. When it comes to China, when it comes to the United States, I think they will see her trying to thread this middle way between really upsetting Beijing so that Beijing really raises the temperature and even invades like it's threatened to do many times in the past, and also preserving Taiwanese way of life and their healthy and raucous democracy. So where does this leave the U.S.? I mean, the U.S. does not officially recognize Taiwan's independence, but it does sell weapons to the country. So is the U.S. on the hook to protect Taiwan against threats from China? So the U.S., since this whole thing really burst into the open in the 70s, the U.S. has been really the, the main reason that Beijing has not invaded Taiwan. And if things were to go to a really high crisis level like they have several times in the past, uh, most recently in the mid-90s under Clinton, it would be the decision of the president, whether that be Trump or whoever succeeds him, to decide, well, Beijing is getting ready to invade Taiwan. Do we want to send U.S. forces to the region, and would we fight a war over this? And it's, yes, we're, we're treaty-bound to do so, but mm -hmm. with something of that import, it's something that the president and, and, to a lesser degree, Congress would decide at the time. Fascinating turn of events. Isaac Stonefish. Isaac, thanks so much Thank for you. stopping by.